No, it's your first lesson. Lex brushed Noelle's hair back behind her ear. It's not like in the city. Belonging to someone isn't the end game, the point where they're allowed to get lazy. It's a beginning, one you have to be damn sure you want. Her skin prickled under the other woman's touch. Not sexual arousal, not exactly, but a sensual pleasure she'd only begun to crave when she'd started spending time with people who violated the social taboo, forbidding unnecessary physical contact. Thank you, she blurted out, leaning into Lex's touch. For convincing Dallas to give me a chance, I'll learn anything I need to learn. I can't go to the communes. They're even worse than Eden. You'd go if you had to, and you'd be all right. Trust me, honey, that is the important thing. To Noelle's everlasting humiliation, her eyes burned. She blinked them twice before realizing there was no stopping it, then squeezed them shut as the first tear slipped free. I didn't really think my family would throw me away. I only wanted to feel something. I know I was privileged, that I must seem like a spoiled city brat. Her chest felt tight, as if all the weight of Eden's claustrophobic expectations were closing in on her again. Are you kidding me? Lex pulled her into a hug and made soothing noises. No offense, baby girl, but I wouldn't have had your life there for anything. Her tears soaked Lex's shirt, but the answer was there, just beyond reach. Why? Noelle didn't even know what she was asking. Why wouldn't Lex want her life? Why hadn't it been enough for her? Why had she thrown it all away? Lex answered them all with three words. You weren't free, she said. You can be here, you know. Dallas talks big about shit, but he's never forced a woman to do anything she didn't want. Remember that too, Noelle. I don't know what I want. I don't know anything. That's why you try things. Eventually, you stumble across the ones that make you happy. Lex kissed her cheek and you learn. Everything anyone tells you, file it away in that brain of yours. She could do that. She'd always been mind-hungry, devouring everything in her parents' digital library before going so far as to learn how to circumvent tablet security to gain access to the more restricted titles, old books from a time before fear and morality had swallowed everything. I'm good at remembering things. Lex patted her back. Go crawl in bed, honey. I'd let you stay in mine, but I don't think you really want to. She rather did, and not just because the sheets would feel heavenly against her skin. Touching Lex meant having an anchor instead of being cast adrift in the darkness that would soon envelop the room. But she'd already cried and laid her soul bare. Enough humiliation for one lifetime, let alone a single evening. She slipped from Lex's enormous bed and crawled back onto the lumpy mattress that folded out of the couch. Can you help me find a job tomorrow? We'll see, all right? It was as close to a promise as she was likely to get. Noelle settled her head against the pillow and closed her eyes, feeling more hopeful than she had in forever, maybe. Thank you, Lex. The lamp clicked off, followed by the overhead lights. Clothing rustled in the darkness, and a light flared, illuminating the space closest to the couch. Here, Lex murmured setting the tiny round lamp on the end table near Noelle's head. The glow was just enough to paint Lex's features in intriguing shadows, but not so bright that it would give Noelle trouble sleeping. I guess you only needed ten seconds to figure me out, she said, trying to turn the words into a joke. Maybe a little more. Get me drunk sometime, and I'll tell you what I figured out. How convenient it would be to have Lex explain Noelle's own secrets to her, then she wouldn't have to bother to learn them herself. As soon as you'll let me drink. Uh-huh. Good night, Noelle.